Stress is simply a reaction to a stimulus that disturbs our physical or mental equilibrium. In other words, it is an omnipresent part of life. A stressful event can trigger the fight-or-flight response, causing hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol to surge through the body. This is your body's way of responding to any kind of demand or threat. When you feel threatened, your nervous system responds by releasing a flood of stress hormones, including adrenaline and cortisol, which roosts the body for emergency action. Your heart pounds faster, muscles tighten, blood pressure rises, breath quickens, and your senses become sharper. These physical changes increase your body strength and stamina and speed your reaction time and enhance your focus. This is known as the fight or flight or mobilization stress response and is your body's way of protecting you. When stress is within your comfort zone, it can help you stay focused, energetic, and alert. In emergency situations, stress can save your life, giving you an extra strength to defend yourself, for example, or spurring you to s slam on the brakes to avoid an accident. Stress can also help you rise to meet challenges. Stress is what keeps you on your toes during a presentation at work or drives you to study for an exam when you'd rather be watching TV. But beyond your comfort zone, stress stops being helpful and can start causing major damage to your mind and body. Many health problems caused by stress include depression and anxiety, weight problems, autoimmune diseases, skin conditions such as enzema, reproductive issues, pain of any kind, heart disease, digestive problems, sleep problems, and cognitive and memory problems. Signs and symptoms of chronic stress or stress overload. Cognitive symptoms, which include memory problems and inability to concentrate. Emotional symptoms, which include depression and anxiety. Physical symptoms, which includes aches and pains or diarrhea and nausea. Or behavioral symptoms, which include eating more or less and sleeping too much or little or withdrawing from others. Some causes of stress include major life changes, work or school, relationship difficulties, financial problems, being too busy, children and family, chronic worry, pessimism, negative self-talk, unrealistic expectations, an all-or-nothing attitude, or rigid thinking. How much stress is too much stress for you? We're all different, and some things may tip you off more than others. You need to focus on your body and listen to what it's telling you in order to know whether you are too stressed out. There are a few different stages of stress. Mild, medium, too much stress, and just complete, utter horrible stress. There are three normal stages of stress for those, for those instances. Alarm, resistance, and exhaustion. Know your levels of stress and how you can deal with them best. Tips for coping with stress. Tip number one, get moving. This is something you can do to start feeling better, to get your adrenaline running, and to help you feel better and more relaxed. You can engage socially and talk to people and bounce ideas off of them, and that might take a load off of your stress, and it will help you feel better. Tip three, set aside relaxation time. Time for you to do things that you want to do, to take breaks and work for a certain amount of healthy times. Tip number four is eat a healthy diet. Don't fill your system with junk food and food that won't make you feel good after because you want to feel good while you're wor working so you won't feel more stressed out. Tip number five, get plenty of sleep because I know nothing stresses me out more than not having enough sleep and not being ready for the next day. There are a lot of misunderstandings about stress that aren't always true. Myth number one, stress is the same for everyone. It's not the same for everyone. Everyone can feel it differently and show it differently. Myth number two, stress is bad. It's not always bad. There can be stress that motivates you to do things that you've been needing to do or gives you the push to do it on time. Myth number three, stress is everywhere, so you just have to live with it. It's not everywhere. You do have to work with it, but you don't have to just live with it. You get to choose when it gets to stress you out. Myth number four, the most popular strategies for reducing stress are the best ones. Like I said, everybody is different. What's going to work for somebody might not work for you, so you should really focus on yourself to see what will work for you rather than what you read on the internet.
Myth number five, if there's no symptoms, there's no stress. That's not true because you might have stress internally and you might not feel it like everyone else, but you still might have stress. So like I said again, just listen to yourself and it will tell you how you feel stress so you can figure out how you can solve it from there. Stress is not the enemy. It can help you in the workplace or at school. It's valuable if you know how to use it. A lot of people don't know how to use it and will just let it stress them out. You need to know how you work so you can use stress management. Here are some tips so you can make stress your friend. Allow time for yourself to go outside and disconnect from the world before school or before work. Train your brain to deal with craziness. Neuroscience research shows that the practice of mindfulness can systematically train the brain to create useful mental habits that promote resilience and productivity at work and in life. The last tip is to focus on monotasking, not multitasking. Multitasking is a thing that a lot of people get wrapped up in that is not always important. Focus on the task at hand and get it done right, and it will help you stress out a lot less.